<laughs> now those same faces that used to consume the haram, they used to consume the haram. Now as a result, what are they going to get in the, in the akhirah? Tusqa, those faces will be given to drink. And literally, siqaya in Arabic is to give somebody to drink in their mouth. Meaning literally they open their mouth and you pour it in it. Right? This is siqaya. Usually it's done for animals, but it can also be done for people. Right? So you just pour the water out and they're drinking like that. Right? Now, what this illustrates is, first of all, they went into this scorching fire. There's absolutely no relief. So now they're desperate. They got to find relief somewhere. So the relief from fire naturally comes from where? From water. So Allah Azza wa Jal describes ayn. They will be given to drink from a spring. From ayn is a spring. So the spring is gushing out water, but it only starts gushing when it's reaching the most intense part of the heat. And where is this water coming? Right onto their faces. Their faces are being made to consume. Tusqa min aynin aniya. Subhanallah. What punishment after punishment Allah describes. As if tasla naran hamiya wasn't intense enough. Now on top of this, tusqa min aynin aniya. Now if you go to the first word in the surah, al-ghashiya. Hal ataka hadithu al-ghashiya. That which covers up. Two things have already covered the people up. These kuffar, they have once been covered up by the fire. Right? Their faces will be covered by fire. On the other hand now, they are covered in boiling water. They are covered in this intense heat of the fire, of the, of the water. Now, the next ayah, inshallah ta'ala, before, actually before we go to the next ayah, one last thing in this ayah. This, the word Ain literally also means a spring that comes out. Okay, So this is actually a spring inside the hellfire whose only purpose is to gush out boiling water, bubbling boiling water. Another word for boiling water or really hot water is Ghalyun, which is used for example in Surah Al-Dukhan. Yaghli fil butoon ka ghali al hamim. But the difference between Ghali and uh, you know uh, here, Ain and Aniya, the difference between them is Ghali means water that boils, uh, rises up. It froths up. And Allah describes that horrendous punishment that that water is inside their stomach and it starts frothing up. So it adds to the torture even within their bodies when they drink that water. May Allah protect us again from the tortures of the hellfire. The word tusqa in the end I mentioned again. Some have uh, in a different qira'ah of the ayah read, recited instead of tusqa, tasqa. And the difference that would make is that it would become active. Meaning they will themselves go to drink. If you read Tusqa, the implication is they're being held and water is being poured on them. If you read Tusqa, it means they are so desperate from the fire that they themselves go into the water and they try to drink even though it's bubbling hot. Even they themselves go. That's what that little change of harakah means. Now we've spoken about drink. The next logical thing to talk about is food. They will have no they have no food for them. The first thing I should note about this is that Laysa usually occurs and normally occurs in the Arabic language for present tense, for immediate situation. Okay? It is not for the future, it is not for the past, it is for the immediate present. But this burning in the hellfire and torture, when is that going to happen? In the future. Why is Allah talking about that in the present? This itself illustrates the anger of Allah on these people. It is as though they are already there. They are being asked to imagine themselves already there. As though right now they have nothing to eat for themselves except bariya. Now the word lahum, which is jar wa majroor, it's supposed to be at the end. Again, it's brought in the beginning. This taqdeem, what it says is, it is, it is for those people especially, that there will be no food at all. لَيْسَ لَهُمْ طَعَامٌ No food will be there at all for them. The format illustrates that there will be food for others. There will be food for others. It is not for them that there will be any food. Implying there will be food for others. The implication of others is there because the word lahum is in the beginning. Had it been laysa ta'amun lahum, then there would be no implication of others. So even by saying laysa lahum ta'amun, it is a threat and an illustration of anger against the kuffar. But at the same time, it is actually a mercy implied to the believers because you will have food. They will have something to eat. Now the word dari' again, this thorny food, Allah did not, did not say laysa lahum ta'amun illa dari'an. He said illa min dari'a. <coughs> the lahum illustrates that they'll actually be going looking for food. For themselves. They'll have to go look around for food. And that their stomachs will force them to look around for food. Now when they're looking around for food, they see this horrible plant. 
and they have to actually go into that plant and eat it and as they're trying to go in what is happening already they're, they're not being served that plant they have to minbadi they have to go from it and get it from there so they're actually being tortured by by even the contact of the plant <coughs> not to mention the fact that they're eating it but Allah says one thing further he says wala yughni min jua and it will not make them free of need from hunger it will not relieve them from feeling the need to feed themselves in other words they'll keep eating and keep eating and keep eating but imagine these people they're eating the worst kind of food the word it's not even food <coughs> the two things that food is supposed to do is first it should elite, you know it should taste like something it should add to your it somehow it benefits your body and then it relieves your hunger the two essential functions of food none of them are being provided by this body and can they still stop they still keep on going when you when you taste something disgusting what do you do what's your first natural reaction Blech. you get you throw, spit it out of your mouth or you say no more thanks it's great but i just have a bad stomach right now or you make an excuse you don't want to eat anymore but these kufar are being made to eat over and over and over again adding further to their humiliation what, what was that about why did i waste my time doing all of that subhanallah as of as the situation stands now those who will enjoy the bliss of that day are going to have to put in a lot of work now they're going to have to give their lives in toil now it's not going to be easy they're not going to have relaxation here so we have this interesting contrast you had these people who were also working hard but in the wrong direction but when they wake up on the day of judgment they're waking up exhausted already amilatun nasiba on the other hand you have those who worked for the sake of allah they also exhausted themselves but when they wake up they wake up fresh they wake up relaxed there's like no toil on them now and when you're fresh you're ready to work but instead of having more work for them now there's even more relaxation for them and on the other hand when they were tired when you're tired you can't take any more but when they were described amilatun nasiba their real toil and labor was ahead but what's really beautiful in this ayah in the grammar of it is it is only for the efforts that led to the benefit of the hereafter that they are content so which efforts led them to the happiness of the last day it is the efforts they made of salah it is the efforts they made of of tazkiya it is the efforts they made to remember allah the efforts they made they made to stay away from the haram the efforts they they made to protect themselves and their family from hellfire the, these are the efforts and the effort to spread the message of this deen to defend the integrity of this deen right the, these are the efforts these people made and there are other efforts they made too they made efforts at work they made efforts at business they made efforts in other things but those things don't even come to their mind on that day it's like those things didn't even count right now those things count a lot but on that day it's like what was that about why did i waste my time doing all of that subhanallah they're going to wish that everything they had worked on in this world was for that meaning they I, they wish they had no other project in this in this dunya and kana dhalika sa'i الذي هو للآخرة كريها إليها في الدنيا لا تباشره إلا بشق الأنفس. And the reality was when they were in this dunya, when they used to do work for for the akhirah, they were kind of they had to force themselves. Come on, come on, get up and go to the masjid. Come on, come on, let's do this. They had to force themselves to do work for the akhirah, but doing work for dunya comes easy, right? It comes easy. Somebody says, let's go to the program. There's a there's a lecture. There's a class. Or let's go memorize some Quran at the masjid or something. You seem like you're free. I don't know, I'm tired. I don't know the weather. I think it's going to rain today. Right? Then one of your friends call, "Hey, let's go see a movie." "Oh, okay, let's go." Right? And it's 20 miles farther away than the much, but you it's all good. No effort. Doesn't even think you don't even think twice. Then there's a fundraising dinner, right? And the masjid is trying to raise funny the money or the school is trying to raise money or the da'wah project is trying to raise money. Brother, it's just $10 everybody, $20 everybody. Like, I don't know. I just, uh, there's a shortage, bad economy. I don't know what's going to happen. Ash-shaytanu ya'idukum al-faqr, right? Shaytan will come and promise you. Uh, he's the one who's going to promise you poverty. And then you leave here and you take a turn you enter Walmart. And how you do infaq fi sabili Walmart, you know, right? How quickly the money you don't even count how it passes you just throw things in the bay oh this tastes good this looks good this is good this is good you throw it all in there you don't even think twice you don't even check the receipt how much it is you just swipe the card no big deal doesn't hurt but when you have to give in the sake of Allah it hurt it pinches oh man i had a $1 bill and a $10 bill in my wallet why did i give the $10 bill <laughs> right if you think twice so the the, the uh, Lucy rightfully comments that it does it does take effort to do things for for deen 
You know why? Because naturally human beings We love things immediately So that which comes to you right now The pleasure will come right now The food will come right now The entertainment will come right now We want to spend for it right now But Allah says I'll give you gardens and mansions And nice drinks and waterfalls and this and that But when is it going to come? You've got to wait a long time, right? So you say I'll work for it later Because it's coming later <laughs> Right? That's the attitude that sinks into the back of our minds Even if we don't say it with our tongues It's back here it's in here. We got to get it out of here. So, لِسَعِيهَا رَضِيَةً The other linguistic thing that's really beautiful here, this sa'i was mentioned in the previous surah as قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى This was the one who was, who was successful. Interestingly, in the previous surah, the unsuccessful were mentioned first, right? And then the successful. And the same thing happens in this surah. The unsuccessful have been mentioned first, and now the successful, right? And there it was, the one who cleansed himself has truly attained success. The one who made an effort to cleanse himself, cleanse your bad habits, cleanse your tongue, cleanse your hands, cleanse your mannerisms, cleanse the way you spend your time, cleanse yourself. This is the person who has attained true success. And thereafter, after cleansing himself, now you find pleasure not in entertaining yourself and making yourself dirty again, but in remembering Allah. He mentioned the name of his Lord and then he made salah. Right? This is a result of cleansing oneself that salah just becomes natural. You find salah difficult? If you find salah, oh my god, it's six o'clock again, asr again? Oh, maghrib already? Can I wait? Can it wait just a little bit? If that's the case, then you know what the real problem is? I haven't really cleansed myself enough yet. That's what's, what's going on. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.